Okay, good day, everyone. Um, my name is Ms. Shaquana from me, and today, along with me, my colleague, Ms. Tiffany Stanton, we are going to be diving in on the topic of respiration. So without any further ado, let's get right into our presentation. So respiration is one of the characteristics of living things, right? Every living thing, they respire. Plants respire, organisms respire. Organi when I say organisms, I mean animals, um, bacteria, and so on. Every living thing has a mechanism of respiration. So respiration is a metabolic process that occurs in all organisms. It is a biochemical process that occurs when this, within the cells of organisms. In this process, the energy ATP or adenosine triphosphate is produced by the breakdown of glucose, which is further used by cells to perform various functions. Every living species from a single-celled organism to a dominant multicellular organism performs respiration. There are two types of respiration. These are aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So basically respiration requires oxygen and so on. And unlike our introduction clearly stated is that every living organism from one-celled organi organisms to like multicellular organisms like trees and wheels and so on, every living thing respires. So air passes through the respiratory system. It is exchanged at the alveoli. In this presentation, we will Explain how air passes across the alveolar sac with the aid of a diagram and describe the features of the alveolar sac and helps it to facilitate this process. Use chemi simple chemical and word equations to explain how respiration happens in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And finally, we are going to use a table to compare aerobic and aerobic respiration. So let's talk about the alveolar sac. So in our in humans and some animals respiratory system, it is made up of the trachea, the lungs, the bronchioli, and the alveoli. So the alveoli are those little air sacs that are branched out from the bronchioli. And this is where the actual gaseous exchange occurs. And what I wanted to bear in mind with this diagram that we're seeing here. There, there are these, this tube here is called a capillary, and I want you to bear in mind the closeness of the capillary to the actual alveolar sac as we go along through this presentation. So let's continue. So the smallest bronchioli end in tiny ear sacs. These are called alveoli and they inflate when a person inhales and deflate when a person exhales. So basically the bronchioli end off in these very tiny little air sacs and they're called the alveoli. And what happens is that when a person's breed, person breathes in or when they inhale, they swell or they inflate. And when a person breathes out or exhale, they deflate or they come back small. So it's kind of like a balloon action there. Um, it has the elasticity so it can open and close, open and close depending on the inhalation and the exhalation of the person. So during gas exchange, oxygen moves from the lungs to the bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide passes from the blood to the lungs. This happens in the lungs between the alveoli and a network of tiny blood vessels called capillaries, which are in the walls of the alveoli. The walls of the alveoli share a membrane with the capillaries. That's how close they are. This lets oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse or move freely between the respiratory system and the bloodstream. Oxygen molecules attach to red blood cells which travel back to the heart. And what I want you to remember in the case of the alveolar sac, it is very thin just so as to allow quick diffusion of the gases. So the thinner a membrane is, the faster the gases are going to diffuse. So that is it for my part of the presentation. So, well, this part of the presentation. So now we're going to be moving on to the two types of respiration, which are aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is a type of cellular respiration which takes place in the presence of oxygen. This type of respiration is common in all plants and, and higher animals, including humans, mammals, and birds. So in basic terms, aerobic respiration requires oxygen. 
However, anaerobic respiration can occur without the use of oxygen. Now just remember that aerobic respiration occurs in humans, animals, and in birds as well. Humans, mammals, and birds, because they have lungs, and lungs use oxygen to breathe. So they we respire and aerobically, aerobically that is. Anaerobic respiration is a type of cellular respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen and is common in all lower organisms such as bacteria and yeast. So while human beings and mammals and birds are respiring with the use of oxygen, yeast and bacteria there are respiring anaerobically. Over to my colleague, Ms. Stanton, who will take this presentation further. Ms. Shaquana explaining how air passes across the alveolar sac with the aid of a diagram for describing the features of the alveolar sac that helps it to facilitate the process. I will now explain both sorry, aerobic and anaerobic respiration with the use of a simple word and chemical equation. The cell needs to be able to harvest energy from glucose to energy, which is a ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Whether oxygen is present or not, cells can always do glycolysis, which occurs in the fluid cytosol of the cell. No oxygen is needed for this. During glycolysis, six carbon is broken in half and rearranged to make the Plurific acid molecules. The process requires two ATP to get started, but alternately it produces four ATP from the aid from ADP, meaning adenosine diphosphate and phosphate, and it produces two NADH, which is nitro um, sorry, nicotinamide ad adenine dinu dichloroxide, sorry, from ADP plus, NAD plus, sorry. So overall glycolysis makes two plurific acid, two ADP and two NADH. From here, they there are two possible pathways that could be taken. Cellular respiration always starts the same way. The gly with glycolysis from the two pathways, they are determined by the presence of oxygen. If there is no oxygen available, anaerobic respiration will occur. But if oxygen is available, aerobic respiration will occur in the mitochondria. Let's look at aerobic respiration For, um, first, which needs oxygen to occur and is a machine. Uh, it produces a lot of um, ATP, right? Okay, so this type of respiration takes place in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cell and in, in the cytosol of, of prokaryotic cell. After glycolysis occurs in the, in the cytosol and sorry, and pluviate acid is attached and pluviate, um, pollu pluviate acid is attached to the enzyme. Therefore, our A, sorry, enzymes are therefore major parts of the carb cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. And the electron transport chain, which is paired with the chemoosmosis. This last step is where oxygen is used. During the carb cycle, um, two ATP and the gas carbon dioxide are produced. The carbon dioxide will eventually diffuse out the cell, out of the cell. 
this this way this is why sorry we breathe out carbon dioxide the electrons transport chain and chemoosmosis takes place in the folded membrane of the mitochondria called the cristate in the in the end aerobic respiration can make up to 38 atp uh theoretically um theoretically but but usually it's a bit less than that more like about 30 to 32 atp at the due to this here you actually get the reaction glucose plus oxygen yields six carbon sorry it sorry so the final reaction sorry is glucose plus oxygen yields six carbon and six water plus energy in the form of atp now let's quickly look at anaerobic respiration which does not need oxygen to occur the anaerobic pathway has another name which is fermentation fermentation is an aerob anaerobic process that converts sugars to acid, gases, and or alcohol, and includes the glycolysis step in it. Fermentation replenishes the supply of NAD+, so that glycolysis can continue creating 2A from glucose molecule. There are two types of fermentation alcoholic fermentation and there is a lactic acid fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, pyruvic acid is converted to a chemical called lactic acid. This process changes NADH back to NAD plus so that glycolysis can continue and produce the two net Fermentation itself does not create any ATP. It just keeps the glycolysis running. Our muscle uses lactic acid fermentation when there is no when there is not enough um, oxygen to do anaerobic to do aerobic respiration. Sorry, your muscles will feel cramp and painful, but the pain will go away as soon as you get enough energy flowing back to those muscles. Other organisms use a different pathway in um, creation of alcohol and carbon dioxide instead of lactic acid from perufic acid. Again, they still make NAD plus for glycolysis to use, but the pathway is a little different. For instance, yeast will undergo a uh, no, um sorry, yeast will undergo alcoholic fermentation, and we use it to our advantage when we make bread or even beer in the factories. The alcohol are uh, and bubbles in beer made by yeast through alcoholic fermentation. When bread dough is, um, sorry, the alcohol and bubbles in beer are made by yeast through alcoholic fermentation. When bread dough is rice or when it raises, that comes from the carbon dioxide bubbles in the fermentation. The alcohol in bread cooks off in the baking process. All right. Now, apart from this, here we also will be looking at the comparison or the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So the key differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration 
is whether there is oxygen or there isn't oxygen. Aerobic respiration needs oxygen, but anaerobic ex um, respiration does not. Aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria, while aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, sorry, occurs in the cytoplasm. Aerobic respiration needs a large amount of ATP made. However, anaerobic respiration needs small amounts made. They are total breakdown of glucose in aerobic respiration, but in anaerobic respiration, they are partial breakdown of glucose. Also again, in aerobic respiration, the end product is carbon dioxide and water. While in anaerobic respiration, the end products, carbon dioxide and lactic acid or alcohol. This brings us to the end of our presentation. I trust that it was a very edifying one. Yes, indeed. I trust that you, our viewers and listeners would have learned something new. So thank you once again and see you next time on yet another presentation. Goodbye for now.